we're given a trapezium, ABCD, and then we're told that AD is parallel to BC. So if AD is parallel to BC, what that then means is, if two vectors are parallel, they are scalar multiples of one another. So I can say that AD is equal to lambda BC. And we'll get, we'll get back to that later. Let's look at the rest of the question first. So we're given the vectors BD, DC, AD, and all of those things are drawn on our diagram. We're trying to work out what K is, where K is in the vector A to D. So we can do that by first of all working out what BC is. So the vector BC is the same thing as going from B to D, so from there to there, and then from D to C afterwards, so plus D to C. And then we can work this out. I'll write in column notation, so B to D is 5, 1, and then D to C is 1 minus 10. B to C is then going to be 6 minus 9. So the reason we've worked out BC is now we can use this equation, which remember we got from AD being parallel to BC. So then we can say that AD, which is actually equal to 4K, so this is AD, and that's equal to lambda, so I'm just using this equation up here, lambda, lambda times BC, BC is 6 minus 9. And then I can simplify the right-hand side, so I multiply this out so we get 6 lambda minus 9 lambda. And I can then equate the i components, so 4 is equal to 6 lambda, equate the j components, so k is equal to minus 9 lambda, and then I can solve simultaneously. So from this, I get lambda is equal to 4 over 6, or 2 over 3. I can then put that into this equation for k, minus 9 times 2 over 3, and that would be minus 6. For part b, we're trying to work out the length of a, b. So do we have a, b? No, we don't. We have a to d, and then we have b to d. So we first have to work out what the vector a to b is. So to go from a to b, we can first go from a to d, and then from d to b. So take this path. We know what a to d is. a to d is equal to 4k, and d to b is the negative of this. So I can rewrite this as, so a to b is equal to a to d, a to d is 4k, and then plus d to b, d to b is the negative of this vector, so d to b is the same thing as minus b to d, so maybe I'll rewrite that here first. a to d minus b to d, that's the same thing. b to d was 5, 1, so then we're going to subtract instead of add 5, 1. This then gives minus 1 and then k minus 1, and then remember that k is equal to minus 6, that's what we had earlier, so then this is then equal to minus 1 minus 6 minus 1, which is then minus 1 minus 7. So now we have the vector a to b. And to find the magnitude of a to b, we just have to square each of the components, add them up, and square root the result. So this will be root 50, or simplified, 5 root 2. For part C, we want to work out the angle ABD. So let's go up to this triangle. We want to work out the angle ABD, which is this one here. So B is in the middle of these three letters, therefore it's the angle next to B that we're trying to work out, this one. So to do that, we want to work out what the lengths of all of the sides are, and then use the cosine rule. We've already worked out what AB is. We know that AB is 5 root 2, so maybe what I'll do is I'll draw that on my diagram. So this length here is 5 root 2. Let's work out the other length. So let's work out what A2D is. A to D is 4K. K was minus 6. So A to D, which was 4 minus 6, the magnitude 
therefore, would be the square root of 4 squared plus minus 6 all squared, and that'll be root 52. And then the other side, so let's put that on the diagram first. So this is root 52. The final one is the 5, 1, so 5i plus j. That's bd. So bd is 5, 1. The magnitude of bd, square root 5 squared plus 1 squared, which is root 26. Put that on our diagram. This is root 26. Okay, so I'm going to redraw that triangle below. So there's our triangle, and then we're trying to work out what theta is over here. So let's call this side A, let's call this side B, and this side C. So then we can say that cos of theta is equal to B squared plus C squared minus A squared, all over 2BC. That's just the cosine rule. And then we can put everything in. So B squared, 26. C squared, so 5 root 2 squared. Remember, 5 root 2 is root 50. So 5 root 2 squared is just 50. Minus A squared, 52 squared. And then all divided by 2BC, 2 times B times C. Type that in, and you end up with 6 root 13 all over... 65 and then finally inverse cos and then we get our answer so inverse cos of 6 root 13 over 65 and this gives us 70.6